the machine is a JLG 1200 SJP. The specifications of the machine are located in the operating manual. Please ensure that you refer to the section relating to specifications to identify maximum workload capacities, maximum vertical platform height, maximum platform reach. The restricted and unrestricted refers to the maximum platform capacity. Please ensure at all times you are operating within the capacities and reaches indicated in the manual. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity, which differ significantly to the training they have received, should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. Carry out your pre-use check, ensuring that the machine's thorough examination is in date in relation to the serial number located on the chassis. Indicator panel. Boom control system test button. The push button is used to test the boom control system and confirm that it is working properly. Telescope control. Provides extension and retraction of the boom when positioned to in or out. Swing control. Provides 360 degree continuous turntable rotation. Lift control provides raising and lowering of the main boom. Platform ground select switch. A three position key operated switch supplies power to the platform control console when positioned to platform. With the switch key held in the ground position, power is shut off to the platform and only ground controls are operable. Hour meter registers the amount of time the machine has been running. Emergency stop switch, pushed in, is off, pulled out is on. When pushed in, all functions will cease. Engine start, auxiliary power switch, or with function enable. Articulating jib. This switch provides power to raising and lowering of the jib. Platform leveling override. A three position switch allows the operator to adjust the automatic self leveling system. This switch is used to adjust the platform level in situations such as ascending or descending a grade. Platform rotate. A three position switch permits rotation of the platform. Jib rotate. Switch permits rotation of the jib and platform. Ground control indicator panel. Battery charging indicate. This indicates a problem in the battery or charging circuit. Low engine oil pressure indicator indicates that engine oil pressure is below normal and service is required. High engine temperature indicator indicates that engine coolant temperature is abnormally high and service is required. Engine oil temperature indicator indicates the temperature of the engine oil which also serves as engine coolant is abnormally high and service is required. Axle set indicator indicates that the axles are fully extended. The indicator will flash on as the axles are either extending or retracted and be on solid when fully extended. The light will go out when the axles are fully retracted. Platform capacity indicator indicates which capacity range is selected. This capacity can only be selected at the platform control console. Boom control system calibrate indicator when the boom control system test button is pushed, this illuminates to indicate that the boom control system has been calibrated properly. Boom control system warning indicator indicates the platform is outside the operating area and operation of certain boom functions may be disabled. 
Please note, attempts to use the disabled function causes the indicator to flash and an alarm to sound. Immediately return the platform to ground. If the indicator remains lit, a boom control system fault or failure has been detected. Immediately isolate, tag and report the machine. Platform overload indicator indicates the platform has been overloaded. When operating any control from the platform, ensure that you're wearing your full body harness and lanyard indicated by risk assessment. To avoid serious injury, do not operate machine. If any control levers or toggle switches controlling platform movement, do not return to the off or neutral position when released. A two position red emergency stop button is supplied in the platform. When pushed in, this switches off the machine. When pulled out, this allows the machine to function. When pulling out the red emergency stop, within about two seconds of pulling the switch out, the machine will perform a diagnostic check of the various electrical circuits. And if everything is okay, the platform alarm will beep once. During this time, the lights on the indicator panel will also blink once as a bulb check. Start and auxiliary power. When pushed forward, the switch energizes the starter motor to start the engine. When pushed back, it energizes the electrically operated hydraulic pump when actuated. Switch must be held on for the duration of the auxiliary pump use. The auxiliary pump will operate platform rotate, jib, platform level override, main boom lift and main telescope and slew. Capacity select. The switch allows the operator to select between an operating envelope of 230 kilograms and 450 kilograms for capacity restriction. Drive orientation override. When the boom is swung over the rear tires or further in either direction, the drive orientation indicator will illuminate when the drive function is selected. Look down on the chassis and ensure that you correctly operate the drive control lever in relation to the color coded arrows on the chassis. Push and release the switch and within three seconds move the drive steer control to activate drive or steer. To operate the drive joystick pull up the locking ring below the handle. The drive control levers are spring loaded and will automatically return to the neutral off position when released. Before driving locate the black and white orientation arrows on both the chassis and the platform control. Move the drive controls in a direction matching the directional arrows. The drive joystick provides for driving either forwards or backwards. The controller is proportional to allow variable drive speeds. Steering is controlled by a thumb operated switch on top of the joystick. Main telescope. This control allows extension and retraction of the main boom. Jib lift. Push forward to lift up, pull back to lower down. Variable lift speed is achievable by using the function speed control dial. Soft touch override switch. This switch enables the functions that were cut out by the soft touch system to operate again at creep speed, allowing the operator to move the platform away from the obstacle that caused the shutdown situation. Jib swing. This switch allows the operator to rotate the jib to the left and the right. Please note the jib swing function is not operable when the capacity select control is in the 450 kilogram mode. Soft touch indicator indicates the soft touch bumper is against an object. All controls are cut out until the override button is pushed at which time controls are active in the creep mode. Platform rotate this switch allows the operator to rotate the basket to the left or the right. Jib switch override. This switch allows the operator to rotate the jib to the right past the electronic stop to stow the jib under the boom for transport. Function speed control. This controls the speed of the boom and the swing functions. Rotate counterclockwise 
for slower speed and clockwise for faster speed. To adjust to creep, turn control fully counterclockwise until it clicks. Main lift swing controller. A proportional dual axis joystick is provided for the main lift and swing. Push forward to lift up, pull back to lower down. Move right to swing right and move left to swing left. The main swing control lever is spring loaded and will automatically return to neutral when released. Drive speed torque select. The forward position gives maximum drive speed. The back position gives maximum torque for rough terrain and climbing slopes. The centre position allows the machine to be driven as quietly as possible. Do not operate machine if drive speed and torque select or function speed switches operate when boom is more than 15 degrees above the horizontal. Steer select. When equipped with four wheel steering, the action of the steering system is operator selectable. The centre switch position gives conventional front wheel steering with the rear wheels remaining unaffected. This is for normal driving at maximum speeds. The forward position is for crab steering, when in this mode both forward and rear axles steer in the same direction, which allows the chassis to move sideways as it goes forward. The back switch position is for coordinated steering. In this mode the front and rear axles steer in the opposite directions to produce the tightest turning circle for manoeuvring in confined areas. Do not use high speed drive in restricted or close quarters or when driving in reverse. Depending on the model of machine, drive speed may automatically be reduced when you increase the steering angle of the wheels. Platform leveling override. A three position switch allows the operator to adjust the automatic self leveling system. This switch is used to adjust platform level in situations such as ascending or descending a grade. Only use the platform leveling override function for the slightest leveling of the platform. Incorrect use could cause a load occupants to shift or fall, resulting in serious injury or death. Horn. If pressed, this switch supplies power to the horn. Indicator panel. The LED indicator panel contains indicator lights that signal problems, conditions or functions operating during machine operation. Boom control select. Please note there are two modes, automatic mode and manual mode. When the boom control is positioned to automatic, lift and telescope movements are coordinated by the boom control system and the automated platform leveling feature is active during lift, telescope, swing and drive movements. When in the automatic mode, the boom control system automatically controls lift and telescope when the lift functions is selected. Manual mode. Lift and telescopic movements are controlled separately by the operator and the automatic platform leveling feature is active only during lift functions. Please note, when positioned to manual, boom functions will be stopped when the envelope limits are reached. When this occurs, operate a different function or select automatic position. Depending upon the angle of the chassis and the angle of the boom, swing left or swing right may be disallowed while in the manual mode. The boom control switch light will illuminate and further attempts to swing in the disallowed direction will cause the boom control select switch light to flash. When this occurs, the only choices are to swing in the opposite direction or switch to automatic mode. The platform control indicator panel uses different shape symbols to alert the operator to different types of operational situations that can arise. Hexagon indicates a potentially hazardous situation, which if not corrected, could result in serious injury or death. This indicator will be red. Triangle indicates an abnormal operating condition, which if not corrected may result in machine interruption or damage. This indicator will be yellow. Square indicates important information regarding the operating conditions. 
This indicator will be green, with the exception of the capacity indicator, which will be green or yellow depending upon platform position. Level System Fault Indicator Indicates a fault in the electronic levelling system. The fault indicator will flash and an alarm sound. All functions will default to creep if the boom is extended past the transport mode or elevated more than 15 degrees above horizontal. If the level system fault indicator is illuminated, shut down the machine, recycle the emergency stop and restart the machine. If the fault persists, return the platform to the stowed position, isolate the machine, tag it and report it to your manager. AC generator indicates the generator is in operation. Platform overload indicator indicates the platform has been overloaded. Platform capacity indicator indicates the maximum platform capacity selected for the platform. Please note one of the capacity lights should be on at all times. Both lights will flash and an alarm will sound if the platform is out of the operating envelope for the selected capacity. Tilt alarm warning light and alarm indicates that the chassis is on a slope. An alarm will also sound when the chassis is on a slope and the boom is above transport position. If lit, when the boom is raised or extended, retract and lower to below horizontal, then reposition the machine so that it is level before continuous operation. If the boom is in the transport position or telescoped out and the machine is on a slope, the tilt alarm warning light will illuminate and an alarm will sound. Creep mode is activated automatically. Glow plug indicator indicates that glow plugs are operating. After turning on ignition, wait until the light goes out before cranking engine. Number 7. Foot switch enable indicator. To operate any function, the foot switch must be depressed and the function selected within 7 seconds. The enable indicator shows that the controls are enabled. If a function is not selected within 7 seconds, the enable light will go out and the foot switch must be released and depressed again to enable the controls. Please note releasing the foot switch removes power from all controls and applies the drive brakes. Fuel level indicator indicates the level of fuel in the fuel tank. Creep speed indicator when the function speed control is turned to the creep position, the indicator acts as a reminder that all functions are set to the slower speed. The light flashes in the control system, puts the machine into creep speed and will be on continuously if the operator selects creep speed. System distress indicator. The light indicates that the boom control system has detected a malfunction and a diagnostic trouble code has been set in the system memory. The malfunction indicator light will illuminate for 2 to 3 seconds when the key is positioned to the on position to act as a self test. Cable service indicator. When illuminated, the light indicates the boom cables are loose or broken and must be repaired or adjusted immediately. Isolate, tag and report the machine. Do not use the machine. Drive orientation indicator. When the boom is swung beyond the rear drive tyres or further in either direction, the drive orientation indicator will illuminate when the drive function is selected. This is a signal for the operator to verify that the drive control is being operated in the proper direction. Axle set indicator. This indicates that the axles are fully extended. The indicator will flash as the axles are extended or attracted and beyond solid when fully extended. The light will go out when the axles are fully retracted. Boom control system warning indicator. This indicates the platform is outside the operating area and operation of certain boom functions may be disabled. Attempts to use the disabled functions cause the indicator to flash and an alarm to sound. Immediately return the platform to the ground. If the indicator remains lit, a boom control system fault or failure has been detected. The machine must immediately be isolated, tagged and reported and no further use of the machine is permitted. Before using your aerial platform, ensure that you carry out a pre-start inspection in accordance with the information located 
in the operator's manual. Be sure that all decals are legible and in place. Check for hydraulic oil leaks and proper oil levels. Check for engine oil leaks and proper oil level. Check the following components or areas for damage, improperly installed or missing parts and any unauthorised modifications. Electrical components, wiring and electrical cables. Hydraulic hoses, fittings, cylinders and manifolds. Fuel and hydraulic tanks. Drive and turntable motors and drive hubs. Wear pads. Tyres and wheels. engines and related components. Lanyard anchorage points. Ensure that you are wearing your PPE or personal protective equipment. Once the walk around inspection is complete, perform a function check of all systems in an area free of overhead and ground level obstructions. Boom control system check. Perform a check of the boom control system as specified. If the machine does not operate properly, turn off the machine immediately, report the problem, isolate the machine and tag it accordingly. Do not operate the machine until it has been declared safe for use. Put the key into the ground control panel and select ground position. Pull out the red emergency stop. Allow the machine to preheat. Start the machine in accordance with the operator's manual. If you have a function enable switch, try and operate all controls in all directions. No functions should operate. Now holding the function enable button, operate each control in turn. Each control should now operate in the manner that you are operating it. To test the emergency stop, pull out the emergency stop. The control panel switch will light up. Push in the emergency stop. The emergency stop will now switch off all lights on the panel. With the platform in the stowed position, axles retracted, check that the boom telescope and lift up functions are disabled. Attempt to lift the boom up. The boom should not lift more than 15 degrees above the horizontal. To extend the axles, turn the key to the platform control and climb into the platform. Close the gate and secure behind you and connect your carabiner to the anchorage point in the platform. Hold the axle extend button and drive forwards and backwards. The axles will now extend. Once the axles are fully extended, turn off the machine and climb out of the platform and return to the ground control panel. Perform the following check with no load in the platform from the ground control station. With the axles fully extended and with the boom fully retracted, position the jib straight and the platform level. Raise the boom off the boom rest so it is horizontal ensuring that there is sufficient space to telescope the boom out. When ready, extend the boom until it stops. The boom must stop on the coloured stripe matching the capacity indicator. If the boom does not stop on the correct stripe, isolate, tag and report the machine as the machine cannot be used. On the ground control panel, push and hold the grey boom control system test button. The system has a boom control system calibrated indicator. The lighting of the green indicator identifies that the system is functioning properly. No indicator light or the lighting of the red indicator indicates the system must be repaired. In this case, isolate, tag and report the machine.
Elevate the main boom and lift the platform up into the air. Push in the emergency stop switch. Pull out the emergency stop switch and hold the auxiliary power button down. Now use the boom control lever to bring the boom control down. The front axles will oscillate when the boom is in the transport position. Ensure the axles retracted and the boom is fully retracted, lowered and centered between the rear wheels prior to beginning lockout test. Place a 6 inch high block in front of the front left wheel. Climb into the platform and start the engine. Place the drive control lever to the forward position and carefully drive the machine up onto the block until the front left wheel is on top of the block. Carefully extend the boom just enough to get it out of the transport position. With boom in this position, place drive control lever into reverse and drive the machine carefully off the block and ramp. Have an assistant check to see that the left front or right rear wheels have remained elevated in position off the ground. Carefully return the boom to the transport position. When the boom reaches the transport position, carefully activate the drive to release the cylinder. The lockout cylinders should release and allow the wheel to rest on the ground. Now repeat the procedure on the right hand wheel. The SkyGuard system is designed as an enhanced control panel protection. When activated, the system stops the functions in use at the time of the activation and also activates the horn. In some cases, the function in use at the time of activation will also be momentarily reversed. If equipped, an optional flashing strobe light will also be activated. The system activates when the sensor bar in the platform experiences a force of approximately 22.7 kilograms or 50 pounds. Excessive force will shear the sensor bar mounting blocks. The SkyGuard override switch is located on the platform control console. Pressing and holding the switch will allow the function stopped by the SkyGuard system to be operated again. When pressure is removed from the sensor bar, functions can be resumed by removing your foot from the foot switch and putting it back on. This will reactivate the controls. The SkyGuard system does not affect machine functions when operating from the ground control station. To secure the machine, ensure that the machine is fully lowered. Both emergency stops are fully in and the key is turned to the off position and removed to isolate the machine. <laughs>